W's and L's, the weekly recap show. Where we give a delta to the things that we like and an L to the things that we don't. Guess it's on me. Yeah, bro, girl. What you <laughs> I'm going to start with my L's, man. I'm giving an L to Alabama. Like the place, the state? Uh, the football team. Okay. Because, and, and not because of Ohio State specifically. So, we're not going to get into that big conversation. But Alabama was the number one recruiting class for 2025. They are not now because uh, a couple of commits have decommitted and moved on to other schools. Uh, and now Ohio State is back number one. And that's great. And I would give a dub to Ohio State. But the reasoning for that it was crazy to me. So they got a kid, and I'll get his name in a second, who originally committed to Alabama, and then he decommitted and went to Auburn. Then decommitted from Auburn and went back, back to, to Alabama, Alabama. And then decommitted and now he decommitted Alabama. again and went back to Auburn. Yeah, I don't think you should be able to do that. Like What oh, kind of shit is that? We, 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 we talk a lot about freedom of movement for, for student athletes. I don't think you should be – like the Kate and Proctor thing was already enough was for crazy. me. Like that was that already kind of sent me. Like I think I think we're we're kind of caught in the middle of trying to pay these kids like adults, but still coddle them and protect them like children. Sure. If we're going to give them all this money, I think they can afford lawyers. I think they can afford legal representation to kind of help them through some of these situations. Sure. And if they're going to take it amongst themselves to kind of treat this process as frivolously as to you know. Commit decommit. and decommit twice within From one recruiting rival? cycle. Yeah, within one recruiting cycle. That that just make a decision, stand by it, young man. Like that's that just is what it is. You make a commitment and you commit to it and you see it through. Yeah, four star Antonio Coleman. That's his name. Yeah, that was a little nuts. That was crazy. Was a little nuts. So I mean, I'm I'm happy that we're number one, but the story of why it's happening is crazy to me. So shout out to the Buckeyes. Oh, you know what? Speaking of the Buckeyes, I got to give an L. It's a weird L for me because I I don't really know how I feel about this. But I'm giving an L to Master Teague. A name you haven't heard in a while, I'm sure. (laughs) The fucking Master Teague, dude. That was random. I saw a tweet from Master Teague uh, referencing the opening for the Olympics. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are upset about how they... Was Snoop the fucking torchbearer? No, 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 no. Picture this. Point is, a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of backlash. And so, Master Teague is kind of just like the scapegoat for all that, because I saw his tweet first. He's the scapegoat? For me. In this L. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. Because he's the only one that I saw. But basically, he goes in and says, uh, first of all, he he tweets like it's a letter. And the funny thing about that is, he starts it with, hello, Olympics. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, Hello, Olympics. Oh, Olympics is oh, not a oh, Olympics. Maybe hello, IOC, or like. No, hello, Olympics. <laughs> hello, Olympics is nuts. He- hello. Uh, <laughs> not, not, now I'm, I'm starting to formulate how he wrote it in his head. Hello, Olympics. Why does your I Master don't Teague like because dumb. Because Ohio State. Why does your dumb <laughs> impression of Master Teague sound like uh, Kendrick Perkins? Because <laughs> he went to Ohio State. Dear Olympics. Now you're <laughs> leaning into Kendrick go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what did he say next? He said, uh, hello, Olympics. Hello, Olympics. The audacity. Oh, you know what? He uses big words, so you can't the do this anymore. audacity. And irreverence. And irreverence. That's crazy. You can't I, do that with a four-syllable word. I got that from Google, correct. Or, or <laughs> I got that from Apple, correct. That's crazy. Spell check, baby. He uses some pretty good words. The audacity and irreverence of your opening performance towards Christ of your opening performance on Christ is appalling and unacceptable. Is appalling and what's the next word? I'm not doing this anymore. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, a lot of people seem to take this Christianity angle against the Olympics for what they showed. And it's just like, is it that serious? Uh. If you're a practicing Christian, I believe so. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what the, the, the scene was or how it was. But then taking aim at the Olympics specifically when so many people do it, like, it's a little weird. I feel like at this point you'd be, you'd be like, oh, 
Another uh, I don't necessarily like that as an excuse. I think there's other angles that you could take to criticize Master T for this, but the the angle of well, well, everybody makes fun of Christ. Then that that's not really that's not really an excuse for calling out somebody specific. That's actually the answer to what you're proposing. If you're saying sure. everybody calls out Christ, then he is actually in real time calling out the people who make fun of Christ. If that's the, the yes, what's that but issue. he's making he's he's referring to the one person that did it. I, I think the criticism is that he didn't look for the person who was responsible for letting this go on. Well he didn't do already, the research to find out who he should criticize. By saying hello Olympics. And, right. Instead of addressing the entire Olympics which includes the athletes and training staff and whatever the fuck else, whole thousands of people who had nothing to do with that. Kinda That's crazy. where the criticism should be. Sure. But I, I, I've, I think we've gotten, in the West, we've gotten very uh, uh, accustomed. Not even, I don't even think it's just the West. Because I've, I've seen people internationally talking about this. And, like, it, it, we're talking about cr uh, war crimes and shit like this. So, uh, oh, the, the U.S. has no rights to to talk about war crimes when they have Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So does that give you the green light to create your own Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Because the US has create has had war crimes, that gives you the green light to go on ahead and just get your own. If they get to do whatever you everybody else does. gets to do it. Like we have become very addicted to what aboutism. It's sure. like it is the go to explanation for getting yourself out of an uncomfortable thing that you have to explain oh well what about steven over there ah nigga i ain't asked you about steven i asked you about you steve has nothing to do with this wrong with you no I, again i get that people can have a stance against just making fun of christianity and i think people do have a legitimate claim there i just thought this tweet was weird and it involved i get it tweet, i get so it i, I mean it was it, it was it was it was odd but I don't, and again, I, don't I, I preface this with anybody. I felt weird about it, but his sentiment echoed a lot of people's sentiment. But I I'm hope them like, sentiments symbolic. Yikes. Anyway. Oh. Okay. This is going to be fun. Okay. So recently, and by recently, I think within the last couple of months, you gave an L to Tiffany Haddish uh, because of something she said in the video. I can't remember what it was. Uh, but she wasn't she taking the video of herself. What did she do? You talking about she took that trip to Israel and then she was on a radio station and she was tripping and then there was a story about her being air 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 train air train. I think that's what I'm actually referring yeah. to. Okay. Okay. So that was somebody else making a video. Yeah, somebody else made the video. But I think about you that. did do one where she was taking a video as well. I think that must have been the Israel one because I remember probably that was probably she was it. on a plane to Israel. I'm right? taking not trip to Israel and then I go to Jerusalem and then go to Tel Aviv. The reason I bring that up is because I also now have a video of Tiffany Haddish doing some dumb shit, and I just felt like I oh, need boy. to give her an L for it. Hey y'all. So I'm out here in Zimbabwe. Okay. Where? She is, she why, is, why are you talking like that? Why she said it like that? Why the fuck is, are you talking like that? Is a part of the problem. In Zimbabwe? Uh, yeah, she's in Zimbabwe. You are not from Zimbabwe. Why are you talking like that? Arhari. And look at the grocery store. We went from Zimbabwe to the grocery store. It's beautiful. She is excited because Zimbabwe has, has a, a grocery, grocery store. store. <laughs> That's not the whole, play the whole video. Hold on, wait a minute, play the whole video. You only played like 12 seconds of the video. It's beautiful in a grocery store. Look at these. In the review, we'll see it. The grocery store is very basic. It's, 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 it's a normal grocery store. It's fire. They got the dates on deck. How much are these? $67. Zimbabwean dollars or whatever their currency is. The price is different. Yes. But it doesn't look like that. it's expensive. Look at this grocery store. It's huge. It's absolutely humongous. It is a regular ass grocery store. In Africa, baby. Yeah. In Africa, baby. Yeah, she does, yeah. She does seem Believe very impressed it. that there's a grocery Believe store in Africa. It. Believe it. Why is this a video? Believe it. Africa. Africa. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. 
and again, this this is an African woman, y'all. This this she's an African. Do you want to see more now? Probably second generation African, but she's an African. Do you want to sure. see more of this? Of this I don't. Regular grocery store. Yes, I Zimbabwe don't. has a grocery store, or if you want to call it a supermarket. Yes, Ugh. African countries have supermarkets. Welcome to the twenty first century. Tiffany Haddish. The the Zimbabwe at the beginning sent me. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Zimbabwe. The fact that she just doesn't understand that Africa is not huts in a, a in a, a field is crazy. Her culture meter is broken. She's not the only one. Insane. Then look, just don't make a mockery of the fact that they have a a grocery store. I seen um, Common doing an interview this week, and he was talking about how he was dating uh, Jennifer Hudson, and how that was the the best relationship he's ever been in. And I, I just got the going through the rolodex of Com- first of all, Common got him. Common has a a a a a list that have put the 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 most Tail getting this dude that you know to shame. Thick ones. Serena Williams, mm-hmm. Jennifer Hudson, mm-hmm. Angela Rye, uh, uh, Erica uh, Badu. Badu. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yep. Man is a knight. He is an anointed knight. Sir Common of Chicago South Side. Sir Common of Chicago South Side. Does Angela Raw have ass like that? Sir Common. Sir Common of House Chicago, Southside. She might be the only one. But even then, she's still good looking. Jesus. Yeah, no, man. He was out here. And how Tiffany Haddish found her way in the middle of that, I'll never understand. Yeah. But anywho, shout out to Common. Play as fuck up from time to yeah, time. Play as fuck up too. <laughs> okay, this last L is actually a toss up. Because, again, I don't really know how I feel about this. Uh, we talked about this quite a while ago. Quite a while. Quite a while. Uh, Keith Lee went to, damn, now I can't remember if it was Atlanta or Houston. But basically, he got into a situation with the restaurant Sweetly Seasoned, where he went out there and there was a barber. Uh, and then, you know, a, a content creator was also out there helping the restaurant uh, or food truck. And... At the end of the day, she ended up not paying all the people out of the money that she received from Keith Lee. Mm -hmm. And got a ton of backlash. Well, supposedly there's a tweet out there now from the son of the owner of Sweetly Season saying that obviously she received a shit ton of backlash and possibly even death threats. Um, But that's not the worst of it. Well, that's that's part of the worst of it, I guess. Uh, But uh, supposedly somebody had reached out to her uh, claiming to be Keith Lee saying that they're going to basically try to run it back and include a barber again uh, to get free cuts. Uh, all the all that the owner of Sweetly Season had to do was uh, pay the barber, I guess. Uh, so pay like $300 or whatever. And they ended up finding out after making this huge hubbub and giving free food out to people, uh, that Keith Lee had nothing to do with any of that. Holy shit! They set up. They actually set up the event and did it and gave away the money. Uh, they gave away the food, the food to, to people. Thinking and that the barber never showed up by Keith Lee. No, That's no, no, karma, no. huh? So wait, let me understand this. So somebody rushed out to them pretending to be Keith Lee, mm-hmm. saying we're going to do this again. Mm-hmm. You give away free food. I'm gonna pay for people to get haircuts. The only thing you got to do is pay for three hundred dollars to the barber. She gets a message. Saying, you know, this is on behalf of Keith Lee and his family. We want to come out and pay our food truck to visit. Um, you know, we sorry about what happened last time. And let's, you know, bring all the parties together and come up with another resolution. My mom was on board. She's willing to do anything to stop, you know, all of the harassment and stuff. I'm like, okay, great. You know, I'll do whatever you need me to do. Just let me know. Um, so she was in contact with, you know, Keith Lee the entire time, planning everything. The only thing that he asked her to pay for was a barber. He was like, if you uh, pay the deposit for the barber, um, it's only $300. You know, I'll in return pay for food for three hours free for everybody in the community. So she's like, cool. So yesterday was the day of the re-grand opening. And, 
you know, she gave away free food for three hours, and, you know, we're looking up after, you know, every uh, couple hours go by, we're like, hey, the barber hasn't shown up, or, you know, I'm like, what time did he say he was getting here? She was like, well, he said him and his team would get here around 2.45. I'm like, what's well, 3.45? I'm like, why is he late? Um, she's like, I don't know. She's trying to contact him. Um, he's like, you know, um, the plane just landed an hour ago. Everybody, we're all together. We'll be there. So we're still giving out free food and, you know, just waiting. Y'all, people, he never showed up. <laughs> the barber never showed up. It was all a scam. Okay, this feels exactly like what they pr pretty much did to Keith Lee. It, it, it sounds like they made, they paid three hundred dollars and then actually gave out to some food to some to some folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, K kind of kind of feels like it did all evened itself out. Now it's sure. unfortunate that they got took up top for the three hundred dollars, but yes, that it's kind well, of well three hundred dollars like, plus the free food that they gave right. out. Uh, but apparently she was already kind of fucked up about all of that because she was, again, supposedly receiving death threats and all sorts of shit uh, and all the backlash. Uh, but apparently now she she either may have tried to unalive herself or oh, she's no. been pushed to that. All right. Uh, I was going to do a whole setup for this dub uh, that I'm giving to the internet. <laughs> Uh, and I'll explain why. But I was gonna do a whole setup, but Wrong time because to give of time, because of time, yeah, I don't know what's what's gonna happen. I'm giving it up to the internet for <sighs> making JD Vance look like the fucking dork that he is <laughs> in multiple ways, in the most craziest ways, and most of them which include lies. But it's so entertaining that I just have to tell you guys. Uh, apparently, he fucks couches. Excuse me. Apparently he fucks couches. Now, where did we even get this from? Well, how did we know? Somebody this? tweeted some story about him fucking a couch, and of course it's a lie, but it's <laughs> hilarious. And so people have taken to making memes off of it. Not only that, but he made a tweet. Fuck standing on couches. Ah, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he also made a tweet, uh, retweeting. Do you, do you, have you ever seen the video of the dolphin? from like SeaWorld or some shit, jumping on to a woman. And humping her. Yes. Yes. He retweeted that and then put like, oh, this is why we need to do away with the internet or some shit, right? But you can see that the tweet was bolded for woman and dolphin, which means <laughs> he's he searching searched it. woman and dolphin. <laughs> and so now there's a bunch of memes with him <laughs> looking up. <coughs> oh, shit. All sorts of sea creatures and crazy shit. They hey, got yo, some that merge. Searching them. out woman dolphin porn is is <laughs> something. That is that's something else. They've got some where they've got a couch that has like dolphin shit on it. Hilarious. And then also the actual speech that he made about the Diet Mountain Dew being racist. I'm sorry. Not the Diet Mountain Dew being racist. Drinking. Oh, Diet he was Mountain being Dew. racist. Drinking Diet Mountain yeah, Dew. Yeah, he was Got like, because everything is racist nowadays. Like, you could even drink Mountain Dew. <laughs> and then, like, he thought like people would laugh, but nobody reacted to it. And it's just like you're a fucking dork. Nobody likes you. He was also pretty vocal about not liking Trump. It, it, that yes. just seems to be yes. a running thing. Yep. Same thing with Pence. Same thing with a lot of the people that were around Trump in, uh, in his first term. He was like, nobody really liked dude. Facts. But we'll take the job. <sighs> no one has a spine in Washington. Here goes Chillmonger, Ohio's very own. All right, chill out. Chill out. Um, But yeah, no, he's just a dork. Fuck him. And uh, I'm glad he's the reason why Trump is polling lower and lower. All right, here we go. Let's start out with the dubs. Uh, first one I got is going out to Young Jeezy. This is a dub? Dub to Young Jeezy. Yeah, man, he got full custody of his daughter. Oh, wow. So, you know. That's dope. Outside of all of the, you know, very loud noise that's been coming out in the aftermath of his divorce with Jeannie Mai, all of the, you know, very nasty back and forth that was happening between them two, I, when it all, when the dust all settles... In a very rare occasion, yeah, the father right. seems to have gotten full custody. That's, that's yeah. what's up, man. What's and up? he's on JT's album. Suck it, Gina Ma. That's crazy. <laughs> and he's on JT's album. He is on JT's album. He was actually the best part of that album to me. I but, didn't listen to the whole album. Anyways, 
Um, oh, okay. I am giving a dub to Paul George. <gasps> what? Paul George is getting a dub for me this week. What? He's getting a dub. I'm not sure where he was doing this chatty packy talk at uh, this week, but um, he was up there gabbing it up. Mm-hmm. And he explained something that actually confirmed what I said about him way back in twenty, the summer of 2018 when the Lakers picked up LeBron James and we were hunting. For, we had just traded for Anthony Davis. We were hunting for a third star to come and play on that roster. Mm-hmm. Paul George was available. Yep. He had just had a flame out with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Mm-hmm. Dame hit a 40-footer at game at buzzer to send them niggas home. He was up there crying. It was a bad shot. Can't nobody tell me that was a bad shot. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that was a good shot. And you know what he did? Right before meetings started for free agency, that nigga went to a party in Oklahoma City with Russell Westbrook and said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. That man had a whole Netflix special planned that didn't premiere until the day after that party. Is it on Netflix? Not Netflix. I'm sorry. ESPN. He had an ESPN special about his free agency. Oh, yeah. I I didn't see that. About his free agency. You know why you didn't watch it, Josh? Because there was no reason. Because the night before the shit came out, he was already dancing it up in Oklahoma City with Russell Westbrook, talking about him coming back. Yeah, we already knew. So there was no point to watch the fucking special anymore. No, at all. But at that time, I said, you know what? You know what? That's okay. He'll rue the day. He'll rue the day. Now, since then, that man spurned the Thunder, went to the Clippers, spurned them. Now he... He's in Philadelphia. Yeah. So what does that man say? Yeah, man. Well, when I was going, when I was playing with the Clippers, everybody was glad to have me home. But it was like, it was like I was on a B squad. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool that you here, but you should have been a Laker. Nigga, you knew that before going there. Who didn't know that before you going there? George is one of the... Mentally softest elite athletes we have ever seen. His mental is mush. He is impressionable, very impressionable, and is very easy to bruise his ego and make not only bruise his ego, but have him make life altering changes to his life based off of that ego bruise. He is a Weak minded individual. It it, it 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 baffles me every time this man opens up his mouth. He gives me another little nugget to me that confirms my 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 thought about his mental weakness. That man's mental fortitude is as strong as a marshmallow. He did come back from that injury. I don't want to hear that. I I, I, don't, I okay. Cool. He definitely was counted out after that injury. Fine. Okay. I, I, so I'll, I'll at least give he him He also that. hasn't been the athletic freak that he was pre-injury no, That since. is also true. He also hasn't been able to be trusted as a number one option since that injury. He did arguably have... Uh, that wasn't an MVP season. Yeah, yeah he had an MVP type season. That nigga has come out at his own mouth and said that I don't think that I could win a championship being the number one option. So that that's oh, enough well, for me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's enough for me. That's I got nothing for that. That's enough for me. And the fact that you're going to wait four, five, six years later to tell everybody that Marcus Turall was right about you picking the wrong fucking team to come to in, in free agency, I don't appreciate that. You should have said that shit while you was on the goddamn Clippers. Yeah, I mean, everybody Let, knew let us know that you're on the goddamn B squad, dog. The Clippers are generally known as the LAB team. It's just, we, we all know this. It is what it is, I mean. Shout out to the new women's heavyweight champion, right? Was the undisputed middleweight champion of the world in the WBC. But now she is the undefeated women's heavyweight champion as well. So now there isn't a single weight class that Clarissa Shields has fought in that she hasn't become a champion in. So shout out to her. Shout out to Iron Gloves over there. Um, put her down in the second round, midway through the second round. Damn. It was it was it was quick work. It Damn. was quicker work. The entrances were longer than the actual fight. Like from Damn. the first entrance to touch gloves 
was longer than the actual fight because the first for the, they did they were scheduled for nine two minute rounds and she was on the canvas for the second time when there was 50 seconds left on the clock in the second round Sheesh. so it, it was it was quick work man that was easy that was easy mm. she's only 14 and 0 now though she only had 14 fights and you know this is her only her third knockout 14th professional fight Okay. Well, that's her official record right now. But that is four, crazy. That four, is still crazy. 14 and 0 with three knockouts. That is still crazy. I th- definitely thought she had more output than that. And I would but probably say more. Shout out to Clarissa Shields. All right, let's get on to the L's here. I'm giving a L to South Africans. Just all South Africans? They're, well, a certain group of them. Black ones, white ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well,. It's funny that you bring that part up. I mean, that's... It's funny that you bring that part up. Do you know there is an official petition on Change.org to oppose Chimita Vanessa Onwe from participating in Miss South Africa? Now, they are saying that she is not actually South African, that she is an immigrant to South Africa and shouldn't be able to compete. Um, I don't like where this is going. Yeah, well, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what Chimita looks like. Could you imagine the white South Africans? This is why I said we gatekeep. This is why I said we needed to reclaim woke and to stop using it in the context that, that, that white people use it in. This is why we need to start gatekeeping our culture in terms of hip hop, in terms of uh, the books, the, our literature, uh, uh, um, our, our, our histories, all of that. We need to keep people out of it because it's almost as if white people didn't get to South Africa in the last two centuries, completely colonize it, and now, and now they're them. trying to convince us that black South Africans, in which Chimidi actually is a black South African, she's from South Africa, the community notes actually did some good on this one, which they never do. Uh, she's 23, she's a law student, she is from South, uh, South Africa, she's a citizen, she was born and raised in Johannesburg. We're doing, is, is this, rever- is it reverse racism? No, it's just racism. Is it regular? But it's not regular racism because, like, she's actually from there. Her ancestors are actually from there. I guess she's just not the modernized South African, which is white people. Right. And now they've convinced her or or kind of just, like, gaslighted everybody into thinking. But it's white people. No, she's not. Those black Africans in South Africa, those aren't the real South Africans. We the... We the... We the South Africans. Which is what white people do. That's regular racism. You're right. I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. I blame I be I blame Elon Musk. I blame Elon Musk. Yeah, me too. But yeah, no, this is this is absolute madness. You wanna know what really drove it home for me? I'm about to pull up another contestant for uh Miss South America. I mean for Miss South Africa. Hold I'm on. sure she meets their European beauty standards. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is Mrs. Sherry Wang, who's also competing for Miss South America. But well, guess who the, doesn't the, have a change.org petition to get her the out? The last of name kind of gave it away. Well, whatever. I was just trying to show you as I was saying it. Uh, you didn't even have to show me once you said the name. <laughs> Sherry Wang, Miss South Africa. No change.org position there. No, not at all. Oh, man. She's clearly from South Africa. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Which, I mean, she could actually she be could from be. South Africa. She could be. But why is there no problem for that? Because she's not black. Hmm. Maybe, Maybe if there were blacks colonizing South Africa, then we could have black South Africans in the Miss South Africa competition. We're trying to uphold segregation here, okay? Jesus. All right. Moving on. Let's see what we got next. Uh oh, Samantha Lopez. Yeah, no, I need my phone for this one too. Samantha Lopez took a nice little vacation. Samantha Lopez was out here jet setting in Paris. 
and you know, kind of doing her thing, backpacking through Europe. She had a nice little Airbnb. Oh, she didn't go to Paris for the Olympics. Yeah, no, she's in there. I think she's there watching the Olympics, but she, you know, she's just do, living her life, man. Am I supposed to know who Samantha Lopez is? No, she's a okay. she's a content creator. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. And you know, she out here living her best life and shit out in, in France. The only problem with it is that Samantha didn't pay for none of this shit. Mm, scammer extraordinaire. Samantha scammed a person that she knew back here in LA, stole her credit card information, and ran it up over there in France. Right and was out here stunting at everybody. Yeah. Just another reminder that the shit you see on the internet is very rarely real. Yeah, it's all fake. Let's, let's see if we can that shit is fake. get an explanation here from homegirl who got did robbed. She, she, oh, okay. I was going to say, did she do a how-to? Hello, guys. You Everybody lie like a real. Samantha Lopez, a.k.a. Scammy Sammy. Scammy this Sammy. This girl is enjoying a Parisian vacation that she charged to my credit card. She look like she'd be scamming. Here she is again <laughs> inside the actual Airbnb that she ran up on my car. Here she is. Oh, it's a black girl. Yeah. On it. Damn. Yeah. Care about media and Are you talking about the one she stole it from or the girl or, in the pictures? Yeah, no, no. Scammy Sammy is not No, black Scammy woman. Sammy's not black. She if stole. you couldn't tell by her name, Samantha Lopez. The credit, inf credit card she information stole from, from the, a black, a black woman. Yeah. Yes. I did not know it's that. It's time that I expose you for the scammer that you are. This is not what I feel like doing with my time right now. I have much better things to do. But you really thought that you were going to travel the world on my dime? Yes, she did. And be posting she absolutely in my did. time and think that you're going to enjoy your vacation? Well, from the pictures, she's enjoying herself. Yeah, no. So I have all the time in the world today. So yeah, let's get into it. Do it. Here are the receipts. And before we get started, her name is Samantha Lopez. She's based in Los Angeles and she has a clothing line called Samantha Christine, beware. Ooh, call out her she's business. A career criminal. She's on the prowl. Please she's a career me. criminal. <laughs> Please don't tell me that homegirl bought some merch from her clothing line and that's how she got And she took that. Well, no, it sounds like she knows her personally. She's on the okay. prowl um, and wants to appear like she's living her best life, but really she is stealing information to make it happen. No, she's still so, living her best yeah. life. Still living Two her best life true. as she's stealing information. Yes. Two things can be true at the same time. Pulling up to the Airbnb, you didn't pay for I got for back from my bachelorette <laughs> party to go check my account. I'm like, okay, let me see what damage was done. And I see this Airbnb charge here for $871. And I was like, hmm, that's odd. We stayed at a hotel. I'm Saying, not hmm, that's Airbnb odd to a random future. $800 charge so on your city bank account? Be? Nuts. You got it, sis. You that got it. just lets you me up. know she got a crazy up, limit up, on that you credit card. Up, up, a random $800. <laughs> Man, I'm shitty. The fuck? Who got my damn car again? Yo, I would notice that immediately, immediately and have a conniption inside. The fuck? But her limit, she got She got, she got it. Good She's credit. up up. Uh, <laughs> Airbnb gives you a unique code when you charge a card. So I oh, I guess I just called disputed. Airbnb. <laughs> let me back up. I first called my bank and credit card yeah. company to let them know about the fraudulent activity. They were able to shut down my account. Oh, so she wouldn't have any further access to my credit card. However, she got the information. Then I called Airbnb. Reservation that was tied to my card. It's obviously not in my name, so this is an unauthorized charge, oh, and yeah. they were finally able to give me information of well, the scammy Sammy. reservation. So the guest name is Samantha. This is the host's name. She checked in June 20th. All right. If you're going to scam, why the fuck are you using your actual name? <laughs> are you dumb? <laughs> are you dumb? Like the minute I find out who booked this <laughs> reservation, I'm on your ass. Yo, Samantha, you got to learn how to scam. Why you so ain't had your July friend? Book she booked a whole week, you guys, a whole week on my card. She created this like 2.40 in the morning to check in at four to try to be slick. She didn't give a fuck about ever the, seeing you again. Uh, <laughs> she didn't think she was ever going to see you again. It down there. It's 71.49. Hmm, that sounds familiar because that's the exact amount that was charged to my card. Right. This is the Airbnb that they are staying. Here's another listing picture. It's actually a really, really cute place. You that's have nice. amazing taste, Samantha. Too bad you just couldn't afford it. <laughs> and if those little balcony overhangs look familiar to you guys, it's because she is actively in real time Damn, she's posting on IG with from the Airbnb that she stole my information. Terrible picture, to by the book. way. Here's another photo. Another Mind terrible you. picture. You, all, picture. Like, you can see. No, no. Sign. That is that's a good picture. That's a good picture of the shit behind her. That's not a good picture of her. Well, she's a part of the, the motif. Anyways, keep going. <laughs> She signs multi. in here, shops. It's not hard to look up. It's not hard to locate you. And I purposely am leaving her Instagram handle out because... Hey, the way she low-key docks this girl... Yeah, just, this is her shameless 
Somebody steals like, from my credit card. Loki set too. this girl up to Very get like to look at the street not oh. Signs in your guys' videos to see where you're at. Literally Actually, putting the street signs up is a little like nuts. But Tagging the place, yeah. the museum that she's, she's at. frequenting it, yeah, like. <laughs> Bitch, we see you. A weirdo. There was a prior instance where she tried to not pay me back a large amount of money. There, I got my money back, and I just was not dealing with her. All right, okay. Uh, I need to now understand that this is not the, the first time this has happened it to you. It doesn't sound like it. And so, how? How well, do you it get It sounds your... like she stole it somehow. Yeah, she stole the money a large amount of money before and now well, she's no I, I think that was probably like some other like transaction because i'm saying that she gives it to her and it was all good but then now this happened oh so the large sum of money that she's referring to now i think that was, was legitimate yeah that was okay. in good faith okay yeah. dealing with her i have not spoke to her probably or seen her probably about a year and a half um so that's a whole other story time if you guys um want that moral I of do. the story is Watch out for these scammers. People really are more concerned about right, appearing like a, a certain prince. way on social media than their actual real life. Just beware of Samantha. If you Another know this girl, picture. just know that she's a full-on scammer, like committing full-on that's, credit that's card scammer fraud. Attire. She you looks have like more, so no one else has sure. to deal with this crap. So have a nice day. Sis, give us the T on your credit limit. <laughs> 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 Try to get like you. Right. Shout out to Scammy Sammy. That's crazy. All right. Drake is getting an L from me. <gasps> that was actually a surprise with no. Paul George, but now I'm not. Well, we all saw what was going on. Um, what happened with, uh, you know, Ross in Vancouver. Yes. And then obviously we had a schoolboy Q cancel, uh, tour date that was canceled in Toronto as well. Yep. Recently. Seems like OVO shutting down the borders. No OVO haters crossing the border. Don't come north, bitch ass niggas. Except maybe OVO King doesn't have the lock on his city like he claims. Maybe there is a faction of folks out there that doesn't like him. There is a, um, there was a, what is this, Loserville Tour 2024. This is a Limp Biscuit concert in uh, Ontario. Yep. yep. Limp Biscuit is crazy. Hearing Limp Biscuit in 2024. Where they nuts. boo Drake? Did you know Drake's here tonight? I thought Drake was your homie. Is half of Drake's lineage turning against him? These are his people. I don't want to hear the excuses of, oh, it's a Limp Biscuit concert. They're racist. These half his folks right here. Oh, no, I don't think they're racist. I just think what Limp Biscuit stands for is like not exactly. It's like when Odd Future booed Drake. Look but at the no, odd no, future but, niggas. But, Frank Ocean, case, Tyler the Creator, they're all insanely popular. I don't think that their audiences are so Well, Odd Future was born niche. out of the underground to become They were popular. born they were Wolfgang before they were Odd Future. They was, well, the was Wolfgang, Odd Future Wolfgang. Wolfgang niggas. Well, they they led a little bit more towards the Wolfgang shit cuz they when them niggas first <laughs> Earl sweatshirt and all them niggas first popped out yeah it was a little bit more raunchy than what we get out of Frank and, and Tyler today yeah, sure no they cleared they cleaned all that, that shit up, was nuts but it, it became mainstream in the certainly process. was a time if you were but around for that but they were born from the underground to become that so okay well the real fans of our future don't fuck with Drake the bigger than it being Lint Biscuit is the fact that it happened in Toronto bigo yes that's that crazy. that would be you know that's crowd crazy. full of people, at least ten to twenty thousand people out here booing Drake yeah, in the true. middle of Toronto. Seems to be a little counter to this narrative of Drake shutting down the borders and nobody who disrespected me in the beef can come back to Canada. Maybe when there's no racist bikers around to beat up security, maybe there's no issue. Maybe there was no issue at that Ross event until the racist bikers showed up. Maybe the thing that Drake actually has on lock in Toronto. Is racist biker groups. Who knows? I feel weird about this entire situation because there was a crowd full of people who wanted to see Fred Durst in 2024. 
We lied. We cheat. We steal. Carmelo drove a milk truck up to the ring. Y'all love Eddie Guerrero, but I, I, I guarantee you, some of you believe that immigrants, all immigrants, are criminals because of Eddie Guerrero. Literally, Lame that's Vince where, McMahon. That's where Trump gets his immigration policy from. <laughs> I saw Eddie Guerrero on the screen. I saw Eddie. I saw Eddie. And you know what? Everybody that's coming over the border now is like Eddie. The They're all Eddies. They're a bunch of Eddies. They lie. They cheat. They steal. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. All right. Let's get a little serious for this one. Yes. Um, up next, we are obviously everybody's heard the story of Sonya Massey. Yes. And the officer who was involved in that is now. Um, set to be arraigned for murder. Yeah, fuck him. I hope he goes to jail. Uh, which which for he a deserves. Long time under the jail. There is kind of a deeper, darker story kind of going on behind this. I don't know if it's necessarily directly connected, but it's for sure associated. Um. So turns out that several months before this happened to Sonia, her nephew was actually shot four-year-old child there was some domestic disturbance with his mother and the and the and the father of the child when the police got there after the mom called them there she was in a pool of her own blood and she was begging them to help save the child well the father involved grabbed the child used it as a shield and the cop shot through the child to hit the perp jesus christ I think just before they showed the uh, the footage of what happened to Sonia, they announced that that cop wasn't going to be charged or dismissed. Wow. Like, it kind of ran congruently. Like, as we are clearing this man for shooting a four-year-old, we're going to show you this footage of his auntie being murdered by another cop. But don't worry, we're actually going to lock this one up. Just don't don't pay attention to the, the baby killer that we just let go. Now, I know everybody on TikTok is talking about the tragic unaliving of Sonia Massey by the police in Springfield, Illinois. But did y'all know that her four-year-old cousin, Terrell Miller, was also unalived by police in March? In fact, the day after Sonia Massey's body cam footage came out, it was announced that the police officer that shot and unalived Terrell Miller was not going to be facing any charges or discipline. They are using Sonia Massey to cover up this announcement. Nick Gawk also did not attempt to do any first aid on the four-year-old that he had just unalived in the chest. And here's the thing, Lieutenant Nick Gawk also knew Terrell's mother. He had been trying for years to hassle her. Here's what happened that night. On March 16th, Terrell's mother's highly intoxicated ex-boyfriend strong-armed his way into their home, telling her that if he couldn't have her, nobody could. He proceeded to spend hours essaying her at knife point. When the police were finally called, they spent 10 minutes outside of the door, not attempting to come in. Lieutenant Nick Grock was the superior on scene who made that call. When they finally broke down the door, they found Kiana on the floor in a puddle of her own blood. She started screaming, save my baby, save my baby. At that point, when she said that, he held the weapon to her, the woman bleeding out on the floor. Instead of neutralizing the man holding a knife, they let him walk across the room into the child's bedroom. When he appeared, he was holding four-year-old Terrell Miller in his arms with a knife against his throat and against his stomach. And with no regard for the child's safety, Nick Grock fired through Terrell, unaliving both he and the perpetrator in one bullet. The body cams will be released next week, probably Monday. When Kiana woke up in the hospital, she was informed that her son did not make it. She then had to recover from 27 incisions from that knife. There will be a protest in Macomb, Monday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sonia Massey's killer is in prison. Terrell's killer is not. And I'm going to be covering this story hard this week. So please, say Terrell's name for Sonia's sake. Same police force. So did they force. think that that had something to do with her... I don't. I don't know. I that 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 I didn't put that. That was in the video that I saw that I sent you. We'll we'll be sure to add it in there so we can get all the the relevance and the context. But uh it, it kind of feels like a like a sleight of hand to me. Like we're actually going to lock this guy up for murder. We maybe don't have a clear case for murder on this other one. 
we're going to let him go, even though it's going to look Child bad. Die. But we'll, we'll mix it in with this other news. So the focus will kind of be there. But then it's not going away because they're related. Yeah. They're related. Yeah. I, uh... Not to, to taking two fucking family members. You know? I, I would try to sue this the police department into oblivion. Facts. I don't know how I feel about f- footage. I myself feel like I can't watch footage of shit like that anymore. I didn't watch it. I only watched the clips that didn't involve the actual, you know, the impact, like what what happened, her mm-hmm. being unalive. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched pretty much up until the point where she says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Mm. And then that's, that's kind of where but I But then at off. the same time, I feel like the footage... It makes something happen. It forces a reaction. Yeah. It forces so a reaction. I, I, it's I'm unfortunate that that's where we are. That you know that that's the only way that we get to see justice. But yeah. it's got to be done. Got to be done. So R.I.P. Rest in heaven to Sonia Massey and her Absolutely. nephew. All right, Tyler Perry getting the L for me. Boy, that boy was gabbing this week. That boy was gabbing. Well, it's cool. Me and Inner Chakra are going to watch the the movie I don't think in a watch party. I don't think you are. He was doing a um, a interview with Vibe News. Don't know why they would give him the time. Vibe. Oh no 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 no. This wasn't with Vibe News. He was on a a podcast with Kiki Palmer. <laughs> Talking about having haters and critics and all this other it's shit so and. A Kiki Palmer podcast. Yeah, let me give Vibe you. News. Same thing. Let me, let me give you the quotes here. This is Tyler Perry dismissing highbrow Negroes criticizing his films. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Who are you to be able to say which black story is important? Get out of here with that bullshit. Uh, Tyler, there is nothing highbrow about not wanting to see your grandmother represented to the nation as a criminal, as a gun toting thug, as an illiterate, high speed chase leading. Brute. That we're supposed to laugh at. That, that's not highbrow. That that is just I I enjoy basic being treated as a human being, basic decency. You know when white people show up as elders in movies, how they're all respected and everybody listens to them and they're quiet when they speak and we help them through doors and shit like that and we give them reverence and deference and all the other stuff that you should give to your ever to your elders. That is what we would like to see from you, not this horseshit amalgamation of what you think the black experience is not this warped totally warped idea of what you think the black female experience is we're from a supposedly straight male did we say highbrow stories that was the quote he said highbrow negroes oh and that those are the people who are criticizing his work we criticize you because you are a one-man marching band of a writer's room you write every single thing that comes out of your production company, bar none. And most of the time it's extremely it's similar to similar the Similar to movies. the last shit. You have a one-track mind on how to tell stories. Yes. You're not inventive. You're not creative. You have reworked the same story arc and the same characters over 40-plus projects. Facts. Facts. Even when you dress it up and present it as something different, it somehow still becomes the same thing. Highbrow Negroes. Fam. Like, oh, this one doesn't have Medea in it, but it's still the same shit. You don't. You wouldn't know a highbrow Negro if you seen one, because your content is for white folks and black people who don't know no better. You wouldn't know a highbrow Negro if you seen one. It's, and it's not highbrow Negroes. It's all cop, that's all criticizing you. You think every person that's laughing at them dirty ass wigs that you be having your actors in is highbrow Negroes? Like, if you enjoy Tyler Perry's content, you should be offended by that. Because you deserve better, and he called you. And now, if you, if you, uh, yeah, he called you lowbrow negro. So I sell to the lowbrow negroes, all them highbrow negroes over there. Yeah, they don't like my stuff because they highfalutin. They think that they should just. They think they deserve better or whatever. That's crazy. You niggas would just eat what I give you. I like you. Y'all my family. Uh, also, inner chakra. Yeah, you you said you were coming to the Twitch channel to watch the movie. Not Tyler Perry. Yes. No, Divorcing not, the black. No, no, no. We're going to watch it. We're going to have a good laugh and La- enjoy ourselves. Last three L's I got, and they're all going to be sports related. So strap in non sports folks. Are they all going to be college football related? Uh, yes. Two. 
two of them are. And then one's going to be basketball related. <laughs> yes. What happened? One's going to be basketball related. Yes. All right, here we go. I want to talk about Tyler Perry being predictable. First L is going out to <laughs> new UCLA head coach Deshaun Foster for having the worst introductory press conference at a Big Ten media day of any coach ever of all time. It, it was abysmal. It was, was god awful. Yeah, I'm um, Coach Foster. We're from UCLA. We know you guys don't know much about UCLA. Jesus Christ, I knew we were going down a bad road at that mark. <laughs> I know you guys don't know much about UCLA. We're in Los Angeles. In the name. It's us in USC. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all got any questions? <laughs> that is not an exaggeration. That is verbatim. That is literally how that went. I'm from USC. We're in L.A. It's yeah, us in I'm USC. From I'm from UCLA. Mm -hmm. It's in L.A. It's mm -hmm. us in USC. Do you have any questions? No, you spitting facts. Whoa. Absolute facts. Whoa, man, that must be speaking confidence in the UCLA uh, 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 coffers there and the alumni and the NIL <laughs> collection. about what you bring to the job. Hey, Collins, or... you picked a grade A university to transfer to. Boy, I, I, I think your career is going to go great. It is. Your career is going Collins to go great. What a great decision maker you are, man. You just picked the greatest ones. You picked the best guys. He left for Miami. You should be a professional picker. Miami to UCLA. Your coach can't even fucking talk. What a great guy you are, man. You just so great. Yikes. Anywho. Um, yeah, that, it was a pretty embarrassing showing. And I hate to see that from one of the only black coaches, uh, you know, nationwide. This is, this is a very short list. Even though the, the Big Ten has a lot of them now. James Franklin, Sharon Moore, uh, Mike Loxley. Ooh, Mike Loxley. Um, now Deshaun Foster, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Lovey Smith was here a couple years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we got four. That's not bad. That's better than most four conferences. Out of what, 14? Four out of 18. Now? Four out of 18. That's not 18. There's 18 teams. No, I thought it was. Didn't we have 12? We got 18 teams now. What do we have before the... 16, and now we have 18. Well, no, now we would add four to make it 20. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan State, Iowa, Wisconsin, Purdue, Northwestern. Did I already say Wisconsin? <laughs> I'm just going to look it up, man. Whiskey, Minnesota. That's 10. There's 18 teams. Yes. The math you just did didn't add up. So there were 14 teams. Now there's 18. You said 18. There were there had to have been 15 teams. But then you said there we was added Washington or four teams. Four teams. There, yeah. was, there were 14 teams. You're right. There were 14 yeah. teams. There you go. Yeah. We got it. So now we got Washington, Oregon, uh, USC, USC, UCLA. UCLA. I'm still missing four. I nah, don't worry about it. Nope. Rutgers. Maryland. I already said Maryland. Rutgers. Indiana? Indiana. Two more. Michigan State? I already said Michigan State. Penn State. You said Penn State in the beginning. You definitely said Ohio State. I know you Yeah. Mm, fuck Ohio State. Uh, fuck you. Uh, Illinois. Illinois. Yep. Purdue? I said Purdue. Purdue! Minnesota. I said Minnesota. Northwestern. I said, I said Northwestern. Why are we doing this? Nope. It's one more. It's one more. Nebraska. Nebraska. Cornhuskers. Which leads me to my next L. That's crazy. That is nuts. That's how that worked out, right? Which leads me to my you next L. You did that on purpose. So now, imagine being the number one player in the country. Having some of the best programs in the nation coming after you. Okay. Two-time defending national champion Georgia. The most recent national champion in the Michigan Wolverines. The 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 most recent university to send an uh, offensive tackle top ten in the NFL draft, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh no, I think that was Olu Fashionu last year. So before last year, it would have been the Ohio State Buckeyes with uh, uh, Pierre Jean Pierre, whatever. Petit yeah, Pierre. Baptiste. Yeah. Baptiste. There you go, Jean Baptiste. Um, we are now talking about David Sanders. The number one composite player in the 2025 class. 
Having all these serious programs after you. Having all of these serious programs after you. Just let me finish the take. I promise you, you'll like it. Well, I promise probably you will, like but he's not the number one player. He is the number one player. David uh, Sanders? Oh, 2025? Yes. Oh, he's the number one tackle. He's the number one player. It was, Bri- it was Bryce Underwood for a while. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's, I didn't it's, know it's that. David Sanders now. Yeah. I didn't know that. But either way, doesn't matter because he's not a serious player. And I am tired of treating these kids like adults when it's time to pay them and then protecting them when it's time to criticize. I'm going to go ahead and leave with my criticism. He's not a serious guy. He's as serious as Justin Scott. He's as serious as Justin Scott. Because as we are coming down the pipe of his decision, we got a decision date in our view. Got a date. And you know who's leading the charge? Not Ohio State. Not Georgia. Clearly not Michigan. He was out on Michigan a long time ago, which probably should have been assigned to everyone. But I'll just leave that there. Nebraska and Tennessee? And Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we, why... But 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 we we did it again. We let these damn rankings convince us that this kid was all world of world. And, and don't let me take it. He may still be very talented at Nebraska. He may be an All American at Nebraska. What I do know he's not going to be is an Outland Award winner, a Remington Award winner, <laughs> a, a, a national champion, or a first round or a first overall pick. Because there is there's not going. Give me the offensive lineman that Matt Rule has sent first round, top 10, and I'll shut the hell up. Give me the offensive lineman that Josh Heupel has sent first round or top 10, and I'll shut the hell up. Hell, I'll even give you a little bit on Tennessee because Tennessee got a nice little cla- a couple classes of offensive linemen coming in over there, even though they haven't really proven that on the field necessarily. And he's from the yet. South. Nebraska doesn't make sense. Nebraska? Stop giving these kids so much. They're still kids. They still make childish decisions. And if you're going to treat them like an adult when it's time to pony up all this money, then treat them like an adult when they make boneheaded decisions like this. I don't, I don't even. Nebraska? The only uh, caveat I guess I have with that is the fact that it seemed like bro was making that statement off of, oh, they've got some big recruiting weekends. And it's just like, uh, so what? I don't know, man. Steve Wilfong has been pretty on point this cycle, and he feels like the Cornhuskers are leading. So I, 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 I just don't even know what to make of that. We'll see. Again, it might be true. I'm just saying. You can go to Georgia. You can go to Ohio State. You can go to Michigan. You can fuck around and go to Clemson, and it makes more sense than these two choices. Yes. Tennessee or Nebraska? I, I, uh, oh my. My last L I got is going out to Bronny James. It has been reported that there was some discord on the summer league team. I felt like Bronny was getting a little bit too much attention. Um, there, the player that was quoted in the article um, said that he really didn't have plays called for him because they were trying to let Bronny shine. A lot of what we could already anticipate happening, uh, sure, sure. Um, just kind of being proven by a first person account. So, very unfortunate. I don't think that's going to make him very likable, especially on a team full of NBA vets that earned their positions, all of them. Uh, when I think this is terrible for the young man's career, but the one thing we know for real is that he's not going to ever be broke or left without. So True. I think I'll be okay either way. <clears throat> True. Big facts. That's it. Well, that's it. That's a hell of an outro for W's and L. You said what? So that's a hell of an outro for W's and L's. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's we it. out. Bye. <laughs> Like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Let us know what you thought about the Dubs and Nails today. Give us your Dubs and Nails in the comments below. Make sure you show up next Sunday for another Dubs and Nails Behind the Cape live stream. Absolutely. And make sure that you visit the Dubs and Nails playlist. See what we talked about last week, especially since some of our Dubs and Nails from this week involved last week as well. Uh, and then also make sure you subscribe. Like you said, we like to do this every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate the live chat. Uh, chatters. Appreciate the, the the reviewers, the replay watchers. And if you're just discovering this, please come back and see more. Yeah, it's still 20. Oh, it's, it's 18 now. But 
still pretty good. Still pretty good maintenance. 